Hey, Pushkar, good morning. Hey, Aradhana, did you say something? Sorry, I did not have my headphones on. Sorry, I was on the phone, um, but yeah, I was just saying hi, Pushkar, how are you? <laughs> no worries. Hope you're doing well and congrats on your nomination. I'm just so okay. glad to hear and read that both of both you and Brandon are getting nominated. Thank you. I don't know if I'm worthy, but yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, and they're definitely very well deserved and I look forward to where you take all of us. Oh, definitely. About the serverless paper too. Um, so you 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 volunteered for that as well, right? Are are you looking, gonna work on that? With us? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I think at that time did we did some initial discussions, but now that I've switched jobs in terms of like uh, things I'm focusing on, this sort of falls a little bit outside of my scope. Oh, so where are you working now? I'm working in uh, VMware now. On... Oh, okay. I, you were with the visa earlier, so yes. okay. You choose all companies with B, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mostly, I'll probably back off and let others take the lead for serverless. But uh, definitely looking forward to contributing more in general in the group. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> Pretty light agenda today, right? 
yeah i think so we'll wait for five minutes for more or so and then start so good All right, I think it's 10 o'clock Pacific. We have folks trickling in slowly. Uh, for people who have joined, add, shared a link to the meeting minutes. Please add yourself to the attendance. And if you have any topics to discuss, put it in front of your name. And we'll wait for a couple more minutes and then get started. Hello. Hey, Brandon. So for folks who have joined just now, we are started to put attendance on our usual meeting minutes talk. We'll wait one more minute and then uh, get started with the meeting. Also, in case you haven't noticed, I'm the facilitator for today's meeting. Thanks, Vishka. By the way, I may have to, um, I may need to disappear for 10 minutes. I have agenda items. So if I'm not, if you call me and I'm not here, feel free to just continue. Okay, sounds good. All right. Cool, okay, so it's two minutes past 10 o'clock Pacific. Hello, everyone. I'm Pushkar, your facilitator for today. Just a reminder that this meeting is being recorded and posted to YouTube shortly after. Your participation in these meetings is an agreement to abide by Cloud Native Security Code of Conduct, 
which can be found in the repo for tax security. So we have folks who have added uh, themselves in the attendance. Uh, if anyone wants to start with a quick update, please go ahead and then we'll also uh, give a chance for the new folks to introduce themselves. I see Brandon, Aradha, and Michael have three updates, one update each at least. Um, maybe Brandon, since you have to go away, uh, we can start with you. Uh, yeah, uh, my update is is in the agenda, so I think we can. Good. Okay. Yeah, I have added there. that in the agenda, so we should be good there. All right. Um, maybe Michael's update is not in the agenda, so we can start with you, Michael. Oh, sorry. Uh, no update for me. Oh, cool. Uh, All right. Okay. My bad. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone new to the group has joined for the first time, feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Piyush, and I'm joining in from Mumbai, India. I'm currently working with Dream11. Not sure how many people have already heard of it. And just happy to contribute. Oh, I, Dream11 is a cricket IPL sponsor? Uh, yeah, fantasy. It's a fantasy sports platform. Ah, nice. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You all are really big back in the cricketing fraternity. Yeah, actually, uh, we are expanding to other sports as well. But yeah, the user base is already quite big. We uh, constantly serve around five, six million concurrent users. Nice. Yeah. All right, cool. Welcome. I'm Anyone curious. else who's new? Cool. So maybe I I spoke over Brandon. Sorry if I if you no, want. I to just was, was saying welcome. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so if no one else hello. has oh, uh, go hello. Ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was uh, struggling with the mute there. My name is Greg Blana, and I am uh, formerly of the Boeing company, uh, about 35 years, 20 of which was spent in identity and access management. Uh, the last few years were focused on um, oh, cloud-native applications and zero trust. And uh, my good friend and cloud-native inspiration, Aradna Chettle, suggested that I might uh, find some value in these meetings and maybe some way to participate. So I'm sitting in to hear what you guys are all about. Well, welcome, Greg. I definitely concur with her. Uh, your contributions are going to be definitely valuable. Look forward to seeing you more. Thank you. All right, cool. Anyone else before we move to the agenda? Yeah, just I, I guess before we head to that, um, I think um, Greg, you you're on the phone, so you may not see the link. Um, we have uh, a meeting link that we usually have like um, attendees put in their names. Um, if you could kind of just go in and put in put in your name as well as your your company, that usually we find that it's a it's a good way for people to get connected to to others as well. No, oh, that sounds good. I'll figure out how to do that after the meeting. Yes, thank you, Greg. Same thing for you, Piyush, as well. Uh, I can send the link again if you don't have it. Uh, I, I guess it's the same one in the calendar invite, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. Cool. So we also need scribes, at least one. Uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, uh, it will really help for all of us to take notes of things we discuss. For there are many people who couldn't join today, so it will be especially useful today. All right, thank you, Brandon, for volunteering. Uh, any, if anyone else wants to do uh, describing, feel free. I can help there too. All right, thanks, Rory. Cool. Okay, so if nothing else, uh, we can get started with the agenda. Uh, 
if Brandon, you're still around, we can start quickly go over your issues since you have to disappear for a bit, and then we can come back to the TOC meeting and Aradna's agenda. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I I may yeah I just don't know whether I have to go. I'm expecting someone to come by. Uh, that's something I have to sign for. But so the the agenda item I had was around updating the code of conduct file. Um, it isn't really much of there's no changes to the con conduct itself. It's mainly around, um, you know how to handle incidents. Um, so the the issue, yeah. Thanks for to, for sharing that. Um, so this is ish pull request six fifty two. Uh, and really the idea here is that we want to provide some guidance. You know, if something happens in the community. Uh, how do you handle these kind of issues? Uh, the main idea being, you know, the, the chairs and the TLs will kind of help as mediation. Um, and, you know, we can help, you know, figure out, you know, what's within the code of conduct, what's not in the code of conduct, and, you know, how to resolve these situations in a way that um, do not escalate since these can be um, a little bit tricky to deal with sometimes. So, um, so the document really, the additions here is really about if you see something um, um, that you think violates a code of conduct or you know whether it doesn't necessarily violate the code of conduct, but you think that it's not inclusive behavior or um, you think it may make people uncomfortable, uh, what do you do? You can, you know, get that direct message, um, bring this up to the, the co-chairs and the TLs through a mailing list that we now have. Uh, and then we can help respond to that. And also for, you know, um, for the content creator side, you know, what do you do when you, uh, you get a notice of this and to understand that, you know, it's, it is um, some of these, um, issues around inclusiveness for and code of conducts are sometimes subjective. And you know, sometimes you may not agree with it, but you know, the main idea is that we want to try our best to stay focused on the topics that we're discussing. And um, if we have to have issues uh, that we need to discuss about code of conduct or certain content um, that we should you know, have the right avenues to do this. And part of this is I think we want to try and create the avenues to do this. Um, so one of it is trying to create the mailing list. We are talking about creating a governance channel where we can talk about some of these uh, issues related to this. Yeah, so this is a PR we'd like feedback on. So if you, um, if you, want to take a look and give some comments, that would be great. And uh, we are hoping to push this pretty soon. All right, uh, for everyone's benefit, I'll just add the PR link to the chat. And then I don't know who owns this agenda item. If you know Brandon or Aradna, we can Pages going to be joining for this. Oh, okay. All right. I guess we'll wait for him if he joins and we'll let him take it over. Uh, until then, maybe we can talk about the serverless security white paper and chaos engineering collaboration, Aradna? Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Um, so do you mind if I share my screen? Go, go for it. Go ahead. Okay. You might see a bunch of stuff. Um, so let's talk about um, one second. chaos engineering first. So we attended the um, TOC meeting yesterday and the app delivery team is actually working on a white paper for chaos engineering. Um, they're gonna try different techniques that um, bring resiliency to the applications in a microservices world um, and container platforms. Um, so to me, security should be part of that chaos engineering because if an application fails, um, it should not expose uh, you know, um, any security threats to it. And also security components have to be integrated into the chaos engineering as well. Um, so my 
had a brief discussion with Emily on the side mm -hmm. and uh, we decided to create this issue. Um, and I reached out to the uh, chairs for that particular um, tag. And they said um, they would welcome any input and they would like our involvement heavily into this uh, work stream. So um, I've created an issue. Um, I have been added to their tag uh, to support this effort. But um, as you know, my bandwidth is limited. So I would like other folks who are interested in participating to also tag this issue so I can include them in these conversations. And then on anyone who wants to participate in um, this white paper or contribute to this white paper, please tag yourself to this issue 678. And then um, we can send the names to the chairs uh, for that tag um, app delivery and we can start making progress on this work. Aradna, one thing to throw out there is that uh, late last year, O'Reilly published a report on security chaos engineering. Mm -hmm. The authors were Aaron Reinhardt and Kelly Shortridge. Mm -hmm. Would be good to reach out to them, see if they'd be willing to participate in, in any shape or form, be it provide input or, or help review once there's something but probably good to reuse prior art and experts in the space definitely um i will make a suggestion to the uh, tag app delivery um or you want me to reach out to them andres what is what is your suggestion there i'd say make the suggestion okay uh, make or pass on the suggestion i guess okay i will and i'll look at the book as well from o'reilly um, it'll be kind of an, an interesting read for me personally. Um, because um, I, um, from my experience, I'm just sharing some thoughts here. Um, cyber resiliency does not exist today in a lot of enterprises. There are a lot of um, issues when you have a failure, all the cyber controls um, fall apart. So how do you keep your systems resilient along with all the security components and their integrations? That's a big challenge, and especially in a microservices world, so um, this will be a fun piece of work, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and a big part, which I think what the report accomplishes is, is help people think around chaos engineering, the con chaos engineering in the context of cyber resiliency, as you said, but there's still long ways to go to have reusable tools and templates to do so. And, and be able to apply chaos engineering in practice to, to cyber resiliency. Sure, there's people who've done this, but there's not a lot of, uh, that's been externalized and, and shared publicly that can make, make it easier for others. That's good, yeah, exactly. One, w one interesting thing that ties into this as well is, I, I think this should also apply to things that, uh, that have state, or rather they especially should apply to things that have state. And one environment that uh, I that I had the pleasure of, of seeing once was uh, they had a bunch of MySQL servers and they had their policy set up so that every 24 hours, the entire node for their MySQL system was rebuilt and the clusters were designed to work around the rebuilding of those nodes over time. And the end result was a much more resilient system that handled the, the state. And so, uh, even if you don't tackle state in the beginning, I would definitely recommend that there, there is a path towards eventually leading towards that. I'm taking notes. Thank you very much. Good ideas. But yeah, if anyone is interested, please tag yourself to this issue and I'll pass on your information or invite you to the Slack channel. And then uh, they'll probably have some separate sub-team meetings. Um, which we can invite you to as well. And you can contribute to this effort and learn as well. That's a great idea. I think that this is at the, I was gonna put this in the chat and I'll post this in a minute. It, this is the intersection of reliability engineering and performance monitoring and logging. Uh, to some extent it's audit. And from a projected point of view, there's capacity management and some machine learning around GitOps and IT ops. And I, do you think that this group's able to peel off a piece that is just uh, resilience that makes sense to you? 
Uh, so um, apparently they are um, that they are a team that is focused on app delivery, right? We have to inject the security and resiliency for cyber perspective in that white paper, I think. So anybody who participates in this effort will have to put on that security hat as part of that effort and address all this continuous compliance and uh, availability as well as uh, part of that and security controls, of course. Yeah, because that you know, in cloud native, we've got kind of parallel tracks with things like, um, and I forget what the name of it is right now, but there's something that parallels the new Relic product for the performance management manage, monitoring side, and then uh, on on the compliance side, you've got things that are more you know more clearly in our space, like Spiffy and so on. Uh, but the two things don't talk to each other. So if you're in security, you're ingesting logs from both of these, right? Right, exactly. Right, great discussion. Looks like there is definitely some interest into this uh, initiative. Should we go for the next item on your agenda, Aradna? Yes, let's do that. Um, that is the serverless security white paper. Um, this issue, we have a number of people who have tagged themselves to this issue. So thank you very much for all the interest and uh, you know your efforts in contributing towards this effort or at least the initiative. Um, so Pushkar, you had sent some comments um, that um, should, uh, let me open your comments in Slack when I had shared the table of contents with you that you wanted to see if um, security assessments or tools and frameworks should be part of this as well. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? What did you mean by that? Y yes, uh, also, although uh, this has been a while since we discussed, so I'm probably not remembering the exact context. So if you have some comments I've made or a Slack message I can discuss now. Um, but I think in general, I added some comments in the doc uh, as well. S some of the things I've found at that time was we could probably use uh, some scoping uh, discussions in the beginning where uh, there are a lot of serverless projects and initiatives and what might be useful is to see if some at some level some of the cncf uh, landscape that has serverless related uh, projects would that be something that can be scoped and one of the other items i probably added is the audiences again would that be something similar to how we had for cloud native security white paper and the supply chain or would it be a little bit different because this might be somewhat of a newer maybe less mature technology compared to things like cloud native or kubernetes etc so but open to discussions and feedback from the group for sure yeah so um, the 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 goal of this paper is to build on the previous serverless paper um i think the serverless um working group had put out a white paper, which is in the link uh, in the issue as well. And the video um, presentation that we got from Doug Davis, I think at that time, um, basically they, they went through a lot of discussions to define what is serverless, right? Um, and they did not necessarily focus on security aspects of it. But in this iteration, because we attack security, we're trying to focus on the security challenges, how to mitigate those threats, right? How to provide continuous compliance and visibility and where are the gaps and how, how does identity work in a serverless world? So um, the goal is to focus on security aspects while we are building off the concepts that have already been laid out by the serverless working group. Um, so um, appreciate um, the comment as well on tools and technologies that we have in the landscape if you want to reference or um, augment. I mean, I would let Brandon speak to that. Um, Brandon, do you have any thoughts on the landscape and the tools and technologies and how we'll fit them in the serverless security discussion? Yeah, so, so we have, um, so the different aspects of the, the white paper and, you know, when we were initially talking about the white paper back like, I would say almost like two years ago, um, the initial scope of the white paper was discussed and basically the outcome was 
there's so much to talk about, so much in depth that we can go through, and we can't fit it all in one white paper, right? And so, uh, one of the issues we talked about, okay, we're gonna split this up into maybe multiple sub white papers, right? So, uh, in this case, um, this would be a white paper for server security, which will still be focused on like the the concepts white paper related stuff. The See the security landscape, which is now called the cloud native security map. Um, what it does is it mirrors the white paper um, table of contents. And basically it consolidates the information for the white paper as well as add uh, projects that are related to that aspect of the white paper. So we initially had a content um, stream for all the different projects. And this is available actually in, in one of the branches, which I will all post in the chat. Um, initially, there were aspects of um, serverless that we had under scope, but there wasn't any contributions under that. So we left it out. But if this is something that someone would like to contribute to, we can just create a uh, a page for it and you know if you want to have projects or if you want to have examples about you know more things that people can take and just implement right out of the box uh, we can add it to the the cognitive security map so I'll, I'll put some details in the in the chat in a bit Brandon I have a question if I may mm -hmm. does the paper contemplate fast as being in scope or does it distinguish between serverless and fast or it conflates the two like what's in scope you talked a little bit about scope yeah so uh, let me let me pull it out really quick um because it can get really really broad i saw evan anderson from k native chime in on the issue and apologies i i haven't read it through i just see one of the latest comments so how, how much do you want to constrain this or adna and, and brandon versus sure a lot of things can be modeled as serverless, and then we have things served as fast. Do you want to talk about well the, the threat models of, of of any of those scenarios can be really broad, like branching out all the way to like rethinking how to tighten up your controls at your API gateway because that's going to be your your surface down to like hey if you're operating the infrastructure. To provide serverless computing, are you enabling SecComp? Are you doing these different things mm -hmm. for hardening the, the underlying OS? Are you using Firecracker or Nitro Enclaves? Yeah, so as far as the white paper goes, the white paper only covers functions. It doesn't cover serverless as a more generic concept. Um, so Brandon, so, you're talking yeah. about existing white paper, right? The definition? Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the cloud native security white paper. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think this, this, this white paper is, uh, definitely a broader scope, right? And I definitely agree. when you're talking about serverless, you're talking about functions as well in some respect. Um, yeah, so, so I, in terms of like, um, stuff related to the landscape, it kind of mirrors the white paper. And I think that if we see that there is information that people now uh, contribute to the landscape, which will also be a, a good part of the original cognitive security white paper. You know, this is something like Robert, um, Robert that, that just joined here, he, he created a PR to add a few additional things to trend modeling in the white paper and then added some projects into the landscape as well. So um, in terms of the, the projects, I would say the best path is to, um, we'll create a placeholder for functions and if you have projects related to security for functions, um, you can create a PR to, to add that into the landscape or the security map. And then maybe also add a few words in the white paper, the, the original security white paper as so. well. Okay. okay. So uh, Brandon, so if I hear you correctly, you said the current scope doesn't cover the k and everything, right? Because currently I'm looking into exploring the, uh, uh, the application of DevSecOps into uh, the k -native. Basically, the implementations, right? Like how, how we want to secure functions from the beginning when the developers are building them. So, do so, you think that uh, that's part of the in the scope? 
Uh, Are you talking about this, the original cloud native security white paper? Or no, the new, paper? the serverless, yeah, the security okay. one. Well, I'll, I'll defer to right now on that. Yeah, <laughs> so on the new one, we are we are trying to expand the scope, not just functions, but also serverless. Okay, so okay, so I'll take a look at the uh, issue and uh, I'll follow up on that. Thank you. Yeah, please mm -hmm. please add comments. I mean, this is yes, not sir. my paper, it's our paper. So let's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hash it out. Yeah. What, what, what would you like included in this scope? Um, there, there will be a sub-team set up, obviously, for this. And um, my hope was that today we can finalize who the project leads will be for this. I'm the sponsor for this particular initiative, but um, I still need one or two people to be the project leads who are gonna, you know, kind of manage it. Uh, looks like uh, Fred Frederick also has his hand up, so he might have a comment. Yeah, um, also consider um, the, the uh, so right now, I think we're focusing primarily on the on the server, on the infrastructure portion. Like, how do I set up a serverless, or how do I set up functions as a ser as a service? We should also maybe maybe it's out of scope for this paper, uh, and we we can explicitly call it out. But there's also a space for helping developers who are building on top of function on top of function as a service or serverless on how to build. Uh, and secure their their application, and what do they need to do to make sure that they integrate well with the with the underlying infrastructure? And so there, there may be a space there as well. Uh, and uh, to, to give a, a real world example, uh, if you're if you're working on on uh, certain cloud environments, and maybe it's changed since since I've last looked at it. If you wanted to be part of a VPC, then you can. You were no longer able to use that specific uh, cloud environment, that cloud-based uh, function or uh, uh, serverless environment. You then had to spin up some form of a of a cluster in order to land onto onto the VPC. And even though I know that's not directly relevant in this space, there there may be other similar things where it's like yes, you're using serverless, but you also have to make sure like from a developer perspective, how do you make sure that you're doing things in a way that is not going to violate the, the constraints of the, of the system? Yeah, Frederick, um, you're right. Um, and the goal, um, I think there are some comments in the uh, paper right now um, as well. We want to provide two perspectives. One is from the platform owner's perspective and one from the consumer's perspective. Um, you know, all the cloud providers who are building these platforms, what, what do they need to worry about? And then as a consuming enterprise, what are the controls that I'm still responsible for and what are the gaps in the controls that I won't have visibility to, et cetera, et cetera. So good point there. Um, and yes, uh, not everything is going to be purely serverless. There are gonna be hybrid use cases as well, right? Where you have um, your, your public cloud um, instances and then from there you are spinning off some applications as serverless. Um, so there'll be interfaces there as well. So maybe that we can add a use case section and we can define some categories of use cases that we are going to address in the paper. So that's great input though. Um, would you like to comment on the issue itself and add that as your feedback? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to add it. And, and I'm, I'm also going to suggest that, uh, that the scope also be defined because this is a space that can grow quite quickly. So. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's important to give a nod to it, but at the same time say, uh, define, determine whether something like this is out of scope or not. And I think for the developer side, my guess is based on the conversations, it probably is, uh, but that also leaves a, a gap there that can eventually be filled in, in the future. Yeah. And we can phase it out too, right? Phase one, this is the paper. Phase two, we'll add some supplement to it. Like we are doing for our cloud native security by paper as well. So. Yeah, great, point. great feedback from everyone. I think uh, all of this recording will exist, but any thoughts that you have shared, if you also add it in the issue, it will be easier to get back later in the future uh, and continue from where we left off today. Uh, and I see Andres has his hand up as well. So Andres, go ahead. Thanks, Pushkar. Yeah, I am really glad that Fred brought that up. There are, there are the two different dimensions, but what's really meaningful is the intersection with cloud native. There's this great blog post from Michael Weisbacker at Square who uh, talks about providing MPLS to Lambda functions. I'll paste that in chat, but this is a great example of 
an organization using Lambda and looking at the cloud native ecosystem for tooling in order to accomplish this. And in this case, they're using Spiffy and Spire. Uh, I think the paper would be a great place to capture and, and highlight this work and, and pose the question of like, what other projects from the ecosystem can be incorporated into like provider FAS. Then for, for like the serverless aspect of, of Kubernetes or, or any development platform, I think there, there are a number of frameworks like Knative is one and you may take like the serving and the eventing, but there are others just like Fission, there's OpenFast. It would be helpful to help people understand the security trade-offs of one over the other. I don't know that we have done security assessments out of this group necessarily, but there's definitely literature and, and documentation to security aspects of, of those projects that would be good to put together in like a compare and contrast of security properties of those to help people make, make decisions and, and how to wire these, these up. So that is like the other dimension of, of somewhat to like platform and ops teams wanting to provide server serverless like capabilities on top of Kubernetes or on top of any other development platform. Uh, I'll write this down as Aradna pointed out is it's great to talk about it here, but also good to, to participate in the issue. I did do a lot of serverless in, in the prior life, which I've been trying to, to get away from. I don't want to go like head in. Um, I worked on, on fission for, for, quite a long time, which brings me to the other thing I thought while you were talking about it was there's not a lot yet on, I forget the, the working group from CNCF that was trying to get to workflow composition or, or composition of, of functions, doing something like AWS step functions. There are a few nascent projects Again, I'm pulling a blank on, on what that, I think it was cloud events, but it was really centered about like event-driven architectures and less so the actual workflow composition, but it would be good to, to tease that out, reassess. As, as Fred said, it's, it's been also been a while since, since I looked at it, so things might've changed, but it would be good to, to provide visibility and, and surface the, the state of different things in the paper or pointers at least of, of where to direct people to, to look, look into and, and do their own research. Definitely. Um, so Andres, seems like you have great ideas. Did you want to contribute to the paper as well? Let me, let me think hard about that one. <laughs> I'm he, he just needs to little figure little out a way to call himself. Based. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need to find a way to scale to zero for myself. The yes. scaling button on, man. Come on. <laughs> I think okay. it's this is the story of everyone in the call, probably. But yeah, I think great right. points. Uh, one one last thing I'll add, uh, and probably I have a comment there already, is uh, in serverless there is a unique problem called cold start problem, which many folks might be familiar. So what it essentially means is if I want to execute something and a pod or a container is already running, then the execution time is uh, smaller or shorter compared to if I have to start a container or a pod and then execute the function and then get the result back and then kill the pod and then repeat the process again. So what happens because of that is the cloud provider sometimes end up sharing the containers for different uh, users uh, which can perform the same action. And as a result of that, if the action is not exactly stateless, then you end up uh, with the accidental exposure of data from a user who executed an action. And now second user is executing an action, but now they have some in-memory files or some other JSON uh, intermediary files that can be exposed accidentally to the second user. And if you're not really working in a trusted multi-tenant environment, then that becomes a problem. So if we could get, give some level of guidance there, uh, which is not like a perfect solution, but some level of guidance where security and 
cold start can have a golden mean approach where it's not too bad from security and not too bad from execution time. I think that would really help. Thank you, Pushkar. Yeah, that's a great point in terms of performance um, as well as scalability, right? Yeah, all right. Okay, so wow, looks like we have another hand up. Uh, Piyush, go ahead. Uh, so Pushka, just on the point of the cold start, right? Uh, I think serverless library already provides some things, right? Uh, from what I remember, from what I gather, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not entirely sure. I'll have to pull up some references, but uh, what serverless library provides essentially is the issue that you mentioned, right? Uh, so considering like AWS Lambdas, for, for instance, right? Uh, when you consider it of those lambdas, uh, serverless, what li serverless library provides you is that you can wake up the container every five minutes so that you can make sure that you have the container for yourself, right? Th this solves the issue from, a, I guess, application point of view and performance point of view, scalability point of view, right? It might not exactly be cost effective at points. I understand that, right? Uh, we just might have to look into it from a security point of view. Right. How exactly uh, will it affect you, and uh, what exactly will you be facing the issues? In? Right. Like the concept is really simple. They simply uh, make a request, wake up your container every five minutes, so that you have a running container at all times within your environment for your uh, Lambda function. Yeah, yeah, def definitely agree there. Uh, the security piece is the perspective we need to add there. Okay, cool. Anyone else has anything? I know we have one or two new folks who joined a little bit late, so I want to give some time for them to introduce themselves as well. So Pushkar, um, I still need people to volunteer and select yes. uh, team leads for this, um, project leads uh, who are gonna you know, set up meetings and you know, um, yeah. collaborate. Do we have Raga on the line? Raga Shree? I don't see her on the line. I think she's since she's in IST time zone, the oh, APAC right. meeting might be more might might be friendlier for her. Got you. Okay. So I'll reach reach out to the folks offline who have volunteered. Um, and then we can make a decision on the project leads for this project. Sounds like Piyush has a ton of perspective. So it would be great if, if you'd like to get involved to to participate. Uh, yeah, I have actually commented on the GitHub issue as well, right? Uh, I'm just waiting for more people to join in and uh, you know uh, see where this is going. Right? Uh, actually, uh, uh, regarding that, right? I also wanted to understand where uh, what exactly uh, is the deadline we are looking at for this, because I think I mean like in my opinion, it availability can also be a major challenge for everyone. Yeah, so we don't have a timeline set for this yet. Um, we are just initiating this effort. Um, timeline depends on the scope of the project as well. So once we finalize the scope, I think we can come up with some dates. Um, and that's why we need these project leads to kind of get people together and start talking about scope and timelines, et cetera. I'll, I'll definitely be happy to help, but yeah, I'm not sure if I'm uh, in a leading position yet. I, th there might be a lot of guidance that I may need essentially, uh, initially to make the contributions as well. Sure, you're welcome. We are all learning at different stages of the continuum, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Irrespective of it's your first meeting or the hundredth meeting, everyone has something to contribute, so don't feel shy. Exactly. So I'll stop sharing. Thank you very much for the discussion um, and all the great points everyone has made on this. Um, uh, take this with the sub team and go right. yeah okay. great thanks thank you so much aradna so looks like we don't have jj in the call so we'll punt the toc meeting update agenda maybe to the next meeting uh i can cover it really quickly you can I, okay yeah. oh, go ahead go ahead um yeah. so um so we had the regular sick update meeting so this happens like once every few toc meetings so the sick oh well I have to stop saying six. The text start um, give an update on what's going on. So for the tech security update, um, we we shared about the chair nomination. So um, which are around nine and I, and we also have and uh, which is currently up for vote. So um, 
I believe the ask um, from JJ was that, you know, if you, it would be helpful to also have non-binding votes on the TOC mailing list. Um, if you have something to say there, it would be nice if you can be a bit more, can put some details there. The other thing that we gave um, the update on in the TOC meeting was on the supply chain white paper, uh, just to kind of educate and also share a bit more um, with the rest of the community as well. Yeah, so right. that was about it. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, congratulations, both of you on the nominations. Everyone who have comments and things to share, definitely add your responses to the mailing list link. Uh, and uh, I think we'll all be richer with all your perspectives there. Thank you, sir. I'm, oh. I'm shocked that Rory has been conspicuously quiet. I was hoping for some. He, he's pun. the scribe. He, That's he's why. Doing a very good I, know, job I, I said scribe. I think puns <laughs> limited by scribing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to describe it every time I write something down, I see Rory already done. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Not going to even try. <laughs> uh, I, I do have one one small request before I, I know you wanted to, to give around to the new members. Um, we haven't had um, um, presentations in a while. Uh, I think it's, I would like to kind of extend a request if you know you have something that you like to present about or you you know someone that would like to present about security not only just about pro new projects but also you know um we used to have a lot of presentations focused around use cases so if you are a consumer of security cognitive security you know what are your security use cases uh, to talk a little bit about them so for example you know we had um someone from the, the banking you know have edge iot on these kind of interesting use cases, those are good presentations as well. So I would uh, recommend um, if you'd like, you can create a, uh, a issue. So if you go to create a new issue, you can select a presentation issue and I'll just paste the link in here. So the way to propose a presentation is pretty simple. You just create this issue. You kind of write down what uh, presentation topic was presenting and uh, the co-chairs and tech leads will kind of help um, organize this into one of the meetings. Brandon, and, and presentations don't have to be 30 minutes or, or a full hour, right? If, if someone's working on something you're really excited about and you want to share it with others and it's maybe a three or five minute demo, that's also fair game. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, one thing probably we missed is, uh, are there any, is there anyone who attended the APAC meeting last time it happened, who has an update or a, just a, just to sync up with this group on what happened there, anything anyone needs help with, et cetera? All right, I suppose no. Uh, in that case, I think Robert, you this is your first or second meeting, so want to give you a chance to introduce yourself, uh, and then anyone else who has also joined recently, feel free to do the same after that. Cool, thank you. Um, my name is Rob Clark. I'm new around here, hoping to contribute little things where I can. My background is all in threat modeling, security architecture, and exploit development. Um, I work for a, a large cloud provider um, and uh, I'm keen to contribute both here and, and in, the, in the Kubernetes community as well. So that's me. Awesome. Welcome, Welcome Robert. And yeah. thanks so much for the PR, Sergey. We love it. <laughs> yeah, ditto. That's, that's, I was going to say the same, like even before your first or second meeting, you already have PR. So that's great to see. Yeah. Well, thanks, thanks for all the help getting those through. Um, I will try and provide some more substantive stuff at some point. Those were like small changes, but yeah, it's nice to be a part of the community and I appreciate everybody reaching out and being helpful as I kind of stumble my way through my first few PRs. All right. Cool. So, so one of the, I, I guess for new members, we have a new member page as well. And kind of part of that is like, 
uh, adding yourself to the readme list of a ten uh, of part um members. So uh, I've just put in the link. Um, to feel free to take a look at that. All right, cool. Uh, anyone else who's new wanted to introduce but couldn't earlier? Okay, I guess no. So if nothing else, we can probably finish 13 minutes early and uh, see oh, you. Uh, yes, go ahead. Apologies. Uh, apologies for go cutting for short. Go for it. Yeah. So actually, I just wanted to build on what uh, Brandon was talking about earlier, the presentations part and everything, right? So uh, I think it's, it's about time that we start also building out community engagement platforms, right? Um, I mean, um, I was looking at the GitHub and I don't see an issue there at the moment or a concrete plan that we have in place, right? But I think it might be worth it to have a community engagement plan and uh, a community engagement platform. We already have a community, uh, should I say platform or should I say group on community.cncf. Um, I think at the moment its ownership is with Emily. But uh, yeah, I mean, these presentations and all can also go there. This can specifically be a security specific, security focused community, right? At a broader level. So I think we, we can make some initiatives. I mean, any thoughts, anyone, if you think this is actually something that we should consider doing. Can you elaborate more what you mean by community engagement platform? Uh, so um, I'm not sure if you if you are already uh, on the community.cncf platform, right? But uh, essentially, you can um, like the way Litmus Chaos is doing, right? I'm, um, uh, I'm pretty sure you must have gone through some of their uh, events or something, right? They uh, they are holding out all of their meetings, their meetups, and all of these things focused primarily to chaos engineering over on Bevy, right? That essentially promotes a larger community engagement as well, right? And people don't necessarily have to come to Zoom or to Slack to engage, uh, engage with the community. Secondly, uh, I mean, going forward, engaging with the community essentially means having a Twitter handle, having, uh, you know, a LinkedIn group or something, things which let you uh, interact with the community, not just on Slack, but on multiple other platforms as well. Okay, yeah. I see what you're talking about. I think there's there's a few things in flight that, that are important to share. How this meeting gets uh, presented, it's changing. We're shifting towards streaming it live as opposed to being a Zoom meeting, recording it, uploading it to YouTube. The meeting will be start to be streamed. There are, there are a number of community reach outs that occur out of the nature of the group uh, events being a big one cloud native security days starting to move to cloud native security conference for the upcoming kubecon uh, i don't want to disclose too 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 much details on that because that's still in flight and, and getting finalized but i totally see what you're saying of, of sharing our talks and our discussions more but like i did not know about community.cncf having tag security share content there would, would be great uh yeah like more more avenues to to share content resources and collateral would be great another thing we could do would be a github page for tax security would be relatively easy to to spin up and and have a tax security website or web page uh to host all the talks or all, all the webinars and, and bring together all, all the assets and, and collateral that exists and also give folks the space and platform to, to present and, and engage. But yeah, curious if you have more thoughts or like very concrete. Uh, so yeah, I feel like uh, um, uh, this is just me picking some of Matt Young's thoughts. Uh, he's currently leading the tag observability team, right? And uh, just some very basic thoughts. And I think these are really, really good, uh, which is having some interviews with CNCF end users focused on their uh, tag domain, like tag security for that matter, 
right? And these are uh, observability specific. So obviously we can tailor it to security as well, right? Uh, series of interviews with creators of security tooling that updated CNCF as well as within CNCF, short videos explaining security terms and concepts, uh, interviews with uh, creators of CNCF incubation and graduated projects, focusing on their challenges, their opportunities, everything, right? And any anything else that we can think of. I mean, these are very basic thought that Matt had. And I think uh, these are some pretty good things that we can build on top of. Totally. Yeah. And, and look, if, if you want to take the initiative and you have like a clear idea of what one of these things look like and you want to start it yourself, go for it. Like the challenges, as Pushkar said, a lot of us like carve out time of, of our day jobs to be here and collaborate and, and participate upstream, but we're all pretty time strapped. But take the initiative if, if you want to do something like it and others will follow. Uh, there is a lot of asks for, for different types of things that, that are on the roadmap. But yeah, again, yeah. just go for it and, and light the path. Yeah, be really yeah I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to as, a, as a next step, Piyush, I would say is uh, we could do two of uh, one of two things, or you could do both. Uh, start a Slack discussion on the tax security channel, explaining so, so exactly what you explained here, so that folks can pitch in who were not in the meeting and probably have, have to run quick uh, to their next meeting soon. And the second one is uh, we generally have a issue template called proposals where you could right. propose new ideas on the tax security GitHub repo. So that would also help get some eyes on from the co-chairs on this. And then we can have a more focused and structured discussion on what it would look like. Absolutely, absolutely. This is this was just a very raw idea, right? Which yeah. I figured I'll get some input from the uh, team as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll uh, translate it into a much more structured issue and everything with proper description. I'll put it up on GitHub and let's see where it takes from there. All right, cool. Yeah, definitely. That is a great ideas and don't be afraid to cross link the GitHub issue to Slack also so people can start looking at it. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and once again, if you don't have takers or you don't get like activation energy right away, if you if you take the first step and do, do a webinar or post something on community.cncf that's around security, uh, that, will, that will catalyze a lot rather than asking other people, hey, we want tax security to do more of these things, but it's like, hey, I'm a member of tax security. I'm, I'm going to run with this. Uh, you'll get others to follow. We've Absolutely. seen good, good experience with that. Awesome. For you. Thanks a lot. So I like to quickly chime in on this as well. I only heard half of this because I had to go for a bit. Um, but the, the, new, uh, the new way that they kind of have for tax is they have this like community channel. So right now we do like own our own YouTube channel and we can do whatever we want with it. Uh, we have been chatting about in the leadership team as well about like a community manager type role. Uh, we figured that it'll be useful for, for multiple things. So I, I think definitely, you know, what Pushka and Andrew said, create the issue, create a proposal, try and get some discussion in but I, I think that this is a topic that the leadership is excited about as well. Brandon, and, and I try to talk to it about the switch over from recording going up to YouTube to being a, a live stream. Yeah. But you yeah. have you have more details on that, if, if you could expand a little on it a little bit further. Yeah, so so the way it's it's being done now is the CNCF is kind of given a bit more autonomy. Uh, to the text to, to manage this. So we have, you know, a streaming service that we can use to stream all weekly meetings. But besides that, they also encourage us to put the different kind of content out there, right? So, so essentially we can create kind of a community around it as well, uh, if we wish. So like, you know, the podcast, uh, the interviews, what you're saying, those will be like a perfect place. So I think this, this is great timing as well. Yep, I agree definitely. And we have a lot of good people who are really well versed with podcast and YouTube interviews in the community. So we'll have good people who can share and guide on that front as well for you, Piyush. 
So I'd be I'd be really glad to collaborate with everyone. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, any last thoughts from anyone? We have three minutes left, but if not, great meeting. The, uh, the, the pun is some some artists are only meant for the radio. So <laughs> yes, that's be true. Huge, like if yeah, don't don't feel like oh it's it's already crowded with podcasters or presenters. <laughs> we can we can we can always use a fresh voice and a, and a fresh face. Yeah. That might be more yeah, more charismatic is. than we yeah. are. Exactly. There is enough content to go around for everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. And Andres, I, I, I don't really think that I can be more charismatic than anyone here. But yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we'll we'll complement each other. Exactly. Yeah, we're waiting. We're still waiting for that um improv improv session. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe if anyone wants to end the meeting with a joke, go for it. Otherwise, I'll see you next we, week. We we have we have complimentary of pop. Um, <laughs> if you haven't already seen it, um, what was the joke? Let me. Go. <laughs> was it why is um what was it why is Switzerland? Wait, what's I lost? Wasn't that, that Rory? Oh, was it? Oh no, Pop, you're right. Yes. Yeah, what's what's the best thing about Switzerland? Yes, I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. Good joke. Yeah. With that fun topic, we'll end the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Let's meet next week. Thank you, Pushka. Thanks, Pushka. Great, great yeah. uh, job today. Thank you. Thank all you right. all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.